Well, hello, my friends. You have found the needle bug. My name is Karen, and today we're going to talk about how to read a Hardanger chart and how to, how to determine the size of fabric that you need. So, what you see here in front of me, and I just thought I'd, I'd show you this for kicks and giggles. This is an old, old, old book from Nordic Needle on Hardanger Embroidery Favorites. Um, golly, when, when was it printed? Oh, well, um, excuse me, 1977. <laughs> so, I just wanted to show you that back then, in the day, this is how we stitched from this. There was not a chart in this book, okay? The next page in this book is um, just suggestions telling you, okay, you needed a seven inch, seven inches framed and you worked how to work it and that was it because the next page went on to the next design. So what we did back then was we actually stitched from these pictures. Okay, so I just thought you'd enjoy that little tidbit of information. <laughs> Today, however, we get graphs and we get, well, graphs, charts, we get them um, given to us in one of two ways. So let's look at this one first. All right. This one is where one square of the fabric equals one fabric thread. And you, I need a pointer here. I'm sorry for my reach. You um, can see from this that, here we go that you're doing five, one, two, three, four, five satin stitches over one, two, three, four threads of fabric. So these graphs are very easy to read in the fact that what you see here on the graph is what you're going to see on your fabric. You know, this is a double cable stitch, more satin stitches to make your star, Okay, so this is how a lot of graphs come today. Pretty easy to read. The only thing with this type of graph is if it's a small chart, you know, if it's an ornament or a relatively small doily, this is fine because it doesn't take up a whole lot of space or a whole lot of paper to chart it out. However, your bigger pieces are going to take up more space on your paper. And here, for example, is how things are charted pretty frequently these days. And you have to understand the fact or keep in mind the fact that each square on here is two fabric threads. Not just one, but two fabric threads. So it still gives us the same information. Five stitches over four threads of fabric. It's charted this way to shrink it up a bit so that you don't have pages upon pages upon pages of a pattern to filter through to stitch your piece. Okay. So this is probably what you're going to see most often on a larger um, pattern. If it's a runner or if it's a larger picture, you may see this more often. So those basically are the two kinds of graphs you're going to see, where it's each square is two fabric threads or each square is one fabric thread, and the chart is going to tell you that. So be sure to read <laughs> the little notes with the chart so that you know what your, um, 
what you're dealing with. Okay? Now, just to give you an example, and this is from Janice Love's book, she has a little key because she tends to chart this way. Okay? So she has a key to show you that this equals this stitched. This equals this stitched. Okay? So this is in the back of her Hardanger Basics and Beyond book, of which, look at this, my poor book is so old, it is falling apart. So old. <laughs> I can't tell you when I bought this. It was back in the back in the cave days. I thought maybe it had a date here in the beginning, but maybe, oh, look, and here, this is 1990, and she... She even signed it, so I um, I use it, and I treasure it, and it is, as you can see, well-loved. <laughs> so I need to tape the cover back together. But yeah, back in 1990 is when I bought this. So those are the, the types of graphs. Now you ask, how do I know how big a piece of fabric I need? So, um, the other thing is when you have the graph like this, you can adjust the size. Okay? So, if you only want to do, okay, you have this diamond here, you have these ships here, but you don't want to do this up here. Let me, um, zoom out a little bit more. There we go. That might be a little bit better. Okay. So, I have this diamond here. I have these here. But I don't want all this up here. I'd rather just do the diamond. What you can do then is, I don't necessarily want to mark this up. Well, it doesn't matter. You can just mark these blocks to adjust it yourself. Okay? You can always adjust. You can change this in here. You can make this even longer. So if you want to um, double the size. Now this is probably going yeah I don't have the I, I just have this part of it if I remember right, this is probably about the center here. So you could adjust this and make it longer by making another photocopy, folding this here like this, take the next photocopy, butt it up either, butt it up against or overlap this block and continue on and continue making it longer as long as you wanted it. I mean, that's what I have one similar to this that was on my piano. And that's what I, what I did with that. I could just kept adding to it and making it longer until I got to the length that I wanted. Okay. So all that being said, how do we determine the size? Well, the easiest way is to count the number of blocks. Because we know, we know every cluster block is four fabric threads. That's the key. That is the bottom line key. Okay? So, don't think of these blocks as X's. Think of them as threads of fabric. All right. So what we want to count is the width of this piece. Now to make it easy, we can count just half. I don't have a ruler here. So, okay, let's, let's use this. <laughs> So half, this is your middle, right here. 
So half is going to be one. We're going to count in, in increments. I'm going to count the number of blocks and multiply by four and then add two. Okay, so we have to count the buttonhole stitch as one, two as the space, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, and then add two more threads. So 19 times four, let's get my handy dandy little calculator out here because Karen doesn't do nothing in her head because every time she does, she messes it up. <laughs> so let's get the, the handy dandy calculator. First, we gotta find it. So we have 19 blocks times four fabric threads. 19 blocks times four fabric threads equals 76 fabric threads plus the two that make up the half plus two is 78 fabric threads and that's half of our design. So we're going to say 78 plus 78 is 156 fabric threads from here to here. Okay, so our widest point is 156 threads. We would do the same going this way, okay? And let's just assume this would be half here, just for counting purposes. So you would count from here to here times four. And if you divide this block in half plus two, and then do the same thing, double the number that you get, that tells you how many threads you want from here to here. Okay. So we've multiplied by four. That tells you the number of threads. Now you figure it the same way that you did for counted cross stitch. If your design was 156 threads or just take 156 stitches in cross stitch and you divided it by your count of fabric. You do the same thing here. You need 156 threads. What count fabric are you going to use? Let's just assume we're going to do it on the 22 count. Personally, folks, 22 count is not my choice of fabric to use for hardanger embroidery. My own personal preference is to use one of the even weaves or linen. Okay, so Joblin, Lugana, Linda, Davos, linen, and it can be any count that your little heart desires. For a beginner, I would suggest you probably use 25 count and 25 count Lugana would probably be, or Jobelin would probably be your better choices. But that's up to you. Personally, right now, <laughs> oh, crazy here, is uh, experimenting on a piece with 40 count linen and linen thread. So Hardanger fabric was only named that by the industry. In Norway, traditional hardanger was always done on linen with linen thread. So I would suggest, again, my personal preference, stay away from the hardanger fabric and pick a Jobelin, a Lugana, or one of those. 
it's going to give you a peace that you're going to be much happier. My, again, own personal opinion is 22 count fabric. You use five and eight pearl cotton, and it's very bulky and chunky looking. Hardanger is supposed to look like lace. So just keep that in mind. The choice is yours. I'm just telling you my preference. So back to this. We know now that from here to here, half our design is 156 stitches. So let's say we're going to do that on 25 count fabric. Let's just assume that, okay? Because we're not going to use hard anchor fabric. So we would take the 156, just like you do in cross stitch, and divide it by 25, which tells us our design from here to here is going to be 6.25 inches wide. So that is just your design area. You would do the same thing for the length. Okay. Now, with Hardanger, it's not, you know, cross stitch, you are always of the mindset to leave at least three inches on each side all the way around because you don't know what you're going to do with it in the end. The same thing applies to hardanger fabric if you know you are going to frame it instead of cutting it away from the fabric then yes you probably want to leave a bigger margin if you know that you are going to trim all this excess fabric away like all of this will get cut away then you really don't need more than an inch and a half, two inches, if you're going to stitch it in hand, as opposed to putting it in a hoop. If you're going to put in a hoop, maybe you do want to leave a little bit more um, just to be able to accommodate that hoop. But keep in mind, that anything beyond the buttonhole stitches is going to go in, is going to be cut away, is going to be scrap. So just keep that in mind and um, decide how much fabric you're willing to waste. So as I said, once you do that for the width, you do that also for the length. Um, the other thing you can do when you want to leave a, a wider margin is you could hem stitch it. So there you want to leave enough to have some space between the stitching and the hem and then enough to turn under a hem to do a hem stitch. So you do have options and how much fabric you leave really depends on what your plan is for the future of that design or what your plan is to do with it when it's finished. Maybe you want to put this on the front of a tote bag. Well, then obviously you're not going to need all that extra fabric. Maybe you're going to cut it away and use it as a doily. You're not going to need all that extra fabric. So think about what's my plan for this piece? What am I going to do with it when it's finished? And take it from there as far as how much margins that you leave. So that, my friends, is the basics of how you determine what size fabric you need and how to read. Well, let me do one more thing about how to read the chart. When you, this makes more sense when you do watch the cl cluster block video, but your cluster blocks alternate direction when you're stair-stepping them. And the way that it's charted tells you what direction those blocks must go in, okay, in order to accommodate the sign, this design. So these are vertical, horizontal, vertical, horizontal, vertical, horizontal, okay? 
We'll get into ships at a late hour. The stars, flowers, ships, all of these kinds of things. Your surface satin stitch surface stitches at a later video. Um, your placement for these. Again, it's a matter of counting. You're going to count off of this and go, okay, that's 4, 8, 12, 16, 20. And then that block. And it's going to start out horizontal if you start it off of this point, which is probably what I would do. I, I would just count my shortest distance. Okay, you could even count off of here if you want. 4, 8, 16, 20, 24. It doesn't matter. But find your point to count. And please remember, everything must match. There is no cheating in the placement. You cannot be one thread off. Every place that you're going to cut, so you're going to cut out in here. Okay, every block must have a mate. Okay, and they have to match. These, even though you're not cutting here, they need to match. Or it throws the, it, it, throw, it just throws the rest off. You know, here you're going to be putting, you could put eyelets in there. But here you're probably going to cut. So this block needs to match this block. This one needs to match this one. So every block needs a partner. And they need to match perfectly. Because if you because you're going to cut threads. So you want to be cutting the same threads on both ends. Okay? So, the long, the short, and the dirty <laughs> of how to read a chart. If you have questions, please do not hesitate to get in touch with me, leave me a comment, and I will be very happy to answer your questions for you or find out that answer for you. So with that, thank you for watching, and I hope you continue with this series of Hardanger basics. Thanks again, and I will see you in the next video.